with some really simple, basic shapes just to get you guys drawing, okay? If you want to get into the really complicated stuff, come by my stand. It's right near the entrance. You know, you can have a little look through and I can give you some more specific advice, okay? So, if anybody needs any paper or pencils, we do have some. Uh, put your hands up if you need any paper or pencils. Otherwise, I'm hoping that most of you brought your own things. Um, and then, yeah, I will, I, will have, I will have my friend sort you out, okay? Couple of ground rules. If you are drawing with me, Anything I do in a lighter color, like a green, is considered a guideline, okay? So if you've got a pencil, please press very lightly, don't press too hard. When I switch to a black, it's as if I'm doing my inks on top, okay? Because manga is all about those clean, crisp lines, all right? So then you can switch to this when you want to make your final lines, okay? So, I will give a couple more disclaimers, which is that I base these guidelines off real life from what I've observed over the years. Some of the guidelines I teach you might be different to what you're used to. But the guidelines work regardless of what style you draw in. That's why I teach them, because they're universal. And I can draw in many different styles. Okay. <laughs> is, it, is this going to be constantly ringing? I'm hoping not. No? Okay. Um, right, so, first off, imagine a human skull. A sphere with the chin and the jaw hanging off the bottom of it. So that's how I always like to teach, okay? I start off with a circle, all right? So please, can, can you draw with me a circle? And what you'll notice is I'm doing it quite roughly because it doesn't matter how messy you are at this stage, this is just pencils, okay? So draw along with me, please. All right, so do a circle. You'll notice it's messy, but it's round, and that's the key thing. Because if your circle is too wide or too tall at this point, you're gonna mess up your face. Okay, so make it nice and round. Next, we cut the circle in half horizontally. We cut it across, okay? So, that line there, if you touch your eyebrows, and if you can feel the bone behind your eyebrows, so sort of like where the forehead is and where your eye sockets start, the squishy bits of your eye sockets, that's what that line there to me represents, okay? It's this part here, just behind your eyebrows and where your eye sockets start, so your brow bone. So I call that the brow line, okay? Eyebrows are usually on there, or slightly above, okay? Right, now, we cut the circle in half vertically. There's something on the mic. Is that better? Is that better? Okay, how about, it? oh, it's still ringing a lot. Right, okay, so the good thing about this is that it, um, you can make this longer. Sorry? Do you know what? I can draw with one hand. Give me, give me a, give me a hand back. It's all. This is working? Okay, all right, so let's, let's stick with this because I can draw with one hand and I can speak with the other one, that's fine. Right. So, the beauty about this guideline here is that you can make this longer or shorter to match whatever your character is, whatever your style is, okay? So I'm gonna start off by drawing like, you know, quite a young, sort of cute looking, like, manga anime girl. So I'm gonna keep it quite short, because, you know, when they're, when they're sort of younger, they tend to have some sort of more rounded faces. But you can make this longer if you're drawing a character with a longer face, all right? So what I do want to emphasize here is that these guidelines are super easy and basic on purpose, because they allow you to customize, okay? So I'm gonna stop mine around about there. Then I'm gonna join up the circle to the bottom of this sort of, like, chin just about here, so we've got ourselves this sort of like egg-shaped template, okay? So this is like your basic template for the face. Now, if you look at people's faces, you'll notice that from their eyebrows down to their chin, the tip of the nose is about halfway, yeah? All right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a marker for the tip of the nose. So from here to here, find the halfway point, okay? Put a little marker for the nose. And then once you've got a marker for the nose, from the tip of the nose down to the chin, divide that distance in half, and then you've got sort of roughly where the mouth is. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm giving you sort of like the maths behind where to put the features of the face. 
because manga does come in many different styles. It can be super, super cutesy or it can be much more realistic. So it's a matter of knowing where to put it all and then you stylize it on top because good manga artists are just good artists because I, I draw in a more realistic style as well. You know, I learned how to draw for real first. So once you've got this, then a um, couple more sort of like maths guidelines. So I really mean it when I say drawing humans is, is maths, you know, it, it, it's maths. Um, find the halfway point down. That's roughly where your eyes are. Now, normally I don't bother drawing that line, but this is, this is to do with real life proportions, okay? Your eyes are actually halfway down your head. Um, and uh, if you play, position your eyes just sort of like below where your eye socket starts, that lines up, okay? So the next bit is getting the scale of things right. So eyes are made up of like a top line, a bottom line, and some sort of circle in between, okay? There, it's, it's sort of like some basis of that. Um, and the matter, like, the hard bit really is getting, you know, the width of them right, getting the size of them right, positioning them right, and stuff like that. So if you look at it, you see it uses up a generous amount of each half of the face. But also they're positioned about, like, imagine there's one eye in between them. Okay, so that's, that helps you put them not too close together, not too far apart. Then it's up to you how big you want to make your eyes, okay? I'm going to make my eyes kind of quite big and sparkly, because why not? Let's make them big and sparkly. So let's go for down here and down here, okay? So that's like the bottom sort of like uh, frame of the eyes. Then um, you can fit your circles kind of like inside, something like this, something like this. I'm drawing from an angle here, so I apologize if it comes out really wonky because I'm like, drawing from this side here, but I just want to make sure that people on that side can see as well. Yeah, that's all right, <laughs> okay. So um, now uh, let's make this sort of a bit more fancy. Um, we love having shiny, sparkly eyes and stuff in manga as well. So we need to also figure out where all the highlights and stuff go. Um, so let's say, um, let's say the lights are like coming from here. Okay, that means you're gonna have a nice shiny highlight in the eyes. So I sort of mark out where the highlights are gonna be. So that's gonna be like a shiny white spot, so I'm gonna use the white of the paper as my highlight, okay? And then I'm gonna ink everything on top of this, all right? So. Switching to the black now. Okay, now eyes on the left side of the face should look a little bit different to eyes on the right side of the face, all right? And that's because of, of the shape of the inner tear duct and the outer corners of the eye. Again, Mangler can sometimes simplify this or like go the whole hog and draw every single thing. Um, I'm gonna go for somewhere in between. Okay, so please watch carefully what I'm going to do to make this eye really look like it belongs on this side of the face. So I start off with this sort of like line down here. Sometimes you draw the tear duct, sometimes you don't. I'm not gonna bother with this, with this particular sort of example. I'm gonna make this top eyelash line nice and thick and bold because our top eyelashes are longer and more prominent than our bottom ones. Then we're gonna make this outer corner quite sharp because that's what our eyes actually do. It's, it's a bit of a sharp corner on the outside. Now, depending on how you shape your eye, generally speaking, you've got to make it look like it all joins up because obviously in real life they do. Um, but I like to leave gaps. So I'm just giving the impression that it should join up. I just leave gaps here and there just to keep it a bit of a lighter sort of like feel. Now, I also, um, draw things like, you know, where the fold of the eyelid is or where the eye socket is. And of course, all of us have differently shaped eyes. Some of us have a monolid, in which case, you know, you don't see it at all. You know, so you have to decide for yourself, you know, where to put the, that, that extra line there. Now, um, for, uh, for doing the shading inside the eyes, okay, so... You can see here what I'm doing is I'm leaving the white and then I'm going all around the outside to give it a nice, dark, sort of like iris edge. And then the pupil itself, that bit's allowed to be quite dark, but you notice how I, I stop when I get to that highlight. I still leave that bit white, okay? Now the next thing you've got to watch out for is it's putting a sort of gradient inside your irises. And we love, we love doing this. Now sometimes we do this with ink, sometimes we do this with pencils, sometimes with watercolor, sometimes with screen tone. You know that all the little dots? that you see in manga, the little dots. So sometimes we shade it that way. But the, the theory is, you start off quite dark and it gradually gets a bit lighter as you move away from the highlight. So if you've got pencils, you know, you just press harder and then you gradually go a little bit softer as you move sort of down. Um, because I've got a pen, I'm gonna hatch this, okay? What I like to do is I like to hatch in the sort of like iris pattern.
so you've got an eye that looks really sort of like glossy and shiny now, okay? Um, also, um, eyelashes. Eyelashes are optional. You can make them sort of like, you know, just flick out only at the end or you can draw them all the way around. But the main rule to consider is eyelashes come out at a different angle, okay? None of them are parallel. They should sort of like spread out like this, all right? So in the middle, they go more sort of straight up and down. At the edges, they go much more sideways, okay? So I've drawn quite a lot of eyelashes here, but that's just so you can really see the effect of how it fans out, yeah? You don't have to draw as many as what I've done. I've just tried to show it, I've just done it like this to make it really, really clear for you. You can also go along the bottom eyelashes as well. Okay, um, and eyebrows, of course, you know, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, sort of like curved, rounded, straight, angled, whatever. You know, mainly, so if you imagine that's where your eye sockets are. I, some people have brows that are quite low, some people have them a bit higher. So again, that's completely down to you. So the reason why I've done one side of the face first is so that you can at least see it as I do it. Now everyone can suffer along with me as we do the other side of the face in reverse. Okay, so you have to sort of like flip your artwork. All right, and try to get it looking symmetrical. And the reason why I sort of like stop for a moment to let you have a moment is because for me to do this, I've got to stand right in front of it, otherwise it will look weird, okay? It's like me trying to do it from this angle is just not gonna work, okay? So I will have to block you for a bit whilst I do it. But if everyone else can concentrate, try your best to imagine you're flipping it so you're doing it the other way around, okay? Good luck, give me one minute. So we've got, we've got the space, we've got the eyes and everything, now the nose. The nose is surprisingly sort of like difficult to do, no matter what sort of art style you work in. And in manga, it's even more of a sort of like challenge because manga is such a clean, sort of minimal style. It's like when you draw manga, you've got to like, um, you've got to try and depict what you can using the minimal number of lines possible, all right? So, I mean, if, if you were drawing a nose in a more realistic style from the front, you know, you might actually draw in all the, the extra little bits and exactly how the side of the nostril and everything is shaped. In manga, you don't have that, we don't have that. Imagine you are sending a photograph to a really, really rubbish photocopier, and then what comes out at the end? That's the bit you focus on because those are the darkest bits, okay? So when you draw a nose in the front, imagine the shadows that your nose casts, all right? Now, if you look at someone's nose from the side, the side sort of profile of the nose, you'll see it sticks out a bit like a triangle, a right angle triangle. So therefore, depending on the light source, normally light sources are slightly above, maybe a little bit to the side or whatever, but it will cast a triangle nose-shaped shadow off to one side, okay? And so, you draw a little shadow that matches the shape of your nose. So, if the light source is coming from here, and your nose is here, sticking out like this, then it'll cast a shadow sort of going that way. So you draw a little line down the middle like that, and then you draw a little triangle shadow off to one side like that. Now, this is a really easy way of doing a nose from the front. This is not the only way. This just happens to be the most like simplest way of doing it, okay? There are more realistic ways where you focus on drawing the shadow of the nostrils and so on underneath. But this is a super, super easy way, often used in a lot of anime as well, because, you know, for animation purposes, you want to keep it quick, clean and sort of quick to draw. The same sort of principle applies to the mouth as well. You don't draw the whole shape of the mouth unless your character's wearing dark lipstick. So if you imagine somebody not wearing lipstick, and if you imagine, you know, them, and, and you're seeing their mouth without all of that, then the darkest bits you see is the line for the mouth opening, and then a shadow under that bottom lip around about there, okay? So those are the bits you draw again. Okay, so the key here in getting this right is making sure that your mouth line is quite bold and also the edges of your mouth because that's kind of where the shadows sort of like pool up. So you kind of want to make sure the edges of your mouth are sort of like a little bit bolder and sort of like um, darker. And then you can stretch them out in the middle, you know, because when people smile, you know, their, 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 their lips sort of thin out a little bit just there. So you make it a bit thinner in the middle, bolder at the edges, and then you make that little line, that little shadow for your lower lip quite um, faint, okay? So not too strong. Now, you can shape the rest of your face and it's completely up to you. You know, some people have really sharp sort of styles like Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! is very, very sharp. 
Um, you can also, you know, you can go for something more rounded. So, for example, like Naruto, you know, particularly the younger characters have got rounded faces. You know, so it's up to you, you know. Think about whether what suits your style, but also what suits your character. If you want to keep it simple, just follow the template, okay? Sorry, hold on. <laughs> bit much on this side. There we go. Sorry, I just need to thin this out a little bit. There we go. That's a bit more even. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to shift everything over just a tiny little bit. <laughs> now, okay. So, um, hands up if you've ever given your characters really big fluffy hair to cover up their ears because you're scared of drawing ears. <laughs> I used to do it. Okay, so um, if you sit up straight, look straight ahead of yourself, and sort of draw a line straight back from your eyebrows, you will touch the tops of your ears, yeah? And then if you put your fingers under your nose and you draw a line straight back from your nostrils, from here all the way to there, you'll touch the bottoms of your ears, all right? So that's the approximate size of your ears and where they sort of fit on, you know? So you have to take that into account if you're drawing somebody looking up or down, is you draw a line to match the angle and the direction of your character, and then you sort of fit them there, okay? So your ears, sort of the top part of it sort of like matches up roughly with where those, that eyebrow line is, and then the bottom of it lines up roughly with where that nostril is, okay? So I'm just gonna go for a curved sort of shape here, and a curved shape, give me a sec, over here. Okay, and then, you can, like, you, can, you can draw all the, the curly bits of the ear cartilage, or you can just simplify it as well, it's, it's up to you. you know? So you can do like, you know, that Y shape and so on of the, of the antihelix and the helix and so on. But yeah, up to you. Now, the neck. The neck is actually vastly underestimated in terms of its importance when it comes to drawing like portraiture, uh, particularly if people aren't you know, used to doing or they're trying it for the first time, because the neck tells you so much about the body and the build of the character. All right, so even if you're just drawing a headshot of someone, depending on the size you draw the neck, you can give a lot of clues as to the type of body your character has. Okay, so what I always advise is learn the rules before you break them, all right? So think about how it looks like in real life first, and then you can stylize it to match whether you're drawing more in a Dragon Ball style or more in a Sailor Moon style, okay? That's stylization, right? So a bare minimum for the width of the neck should be about one third of the head, okay? That's like the minimum. This is only really for like babies, all right? And that's the reason why they're all floppy because you know, they haven't actually got the muscles in their neck to be able to hold them upright. So you have to, you know, as we get older and we grow so stronger, we build up a little bit more bulk, our necks get a little bit thicker as well, all right? And then of course, you know, you've got like bodybuilders who are like massive, like full width necks. But you know, a massive full width neck is not gonna suit a young girl, all right? So you have to pick a neck size that suits and then you stylize it slightly thicker or slightly thinner depending on the style of manga you're doing, okay? So, I mean, this is, you know, a, a fairly sort of standard sort of like shonen, shoujo sort of style, you know, quite a popular sort of teenage sort of style. So, this is the minimum. I'd only increase it a little bit um, in order for it to sort of work in this style. Um, I think in real life, it's, it's sort of similar to real life in that one, actually, if this is quite a young girl. Maybe a tiny bit thicker, but, you know, style, style purposes, I'll leave it at about there. So about here and about here is fine. Okay, so we've got a neck. Now, hair, hair on top. Uh, the biggest mistake people make when they're drawing like characters is that you know they don't have, they don't leave enough room for the hair. And this happens particularly if you know they they try to draw without guidelines or so understanding where like the, the 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 edge of the head goes. So hair is fluffy. Hair is bigger. All right, hair's volume. So you've always got to make sure you're drawing more hair than that sort of like basic kind of guideline without any hair. So imagine you're putting a wig on top, all right? Because if you draw hair only up to this point here, it looks like you're painting hair on a bald head, which is not a good look, okay? So make sure you are actually like drawing it more, like bigger. And if you're ever not sure about it, just make it bigger. We will never ever be wrong to have like hair, like that's really, really big, we love big hair. So just go big, okay? The next thing is, because manga is a more minimal uh, style, um, you do have to make sure that each of your strokes count. You know, so um, when, you, when you draw your strokes, 
draw shapes, draw outlines. Don't draw every single strand of hair, all right? That only comes in the shading process. We're sketching at the moment, all right? Shading and coloring, that's when you hint at all the individual strands. But right now, when you're doing your sketching, is when you sort of like have a go at doing the, the, the rough outline. So you draw the clumps of hair, you draw the spikes of hair, okay? So you draw the shape of the hairstyle rather than every single strand. The final thing is, make sure your lines match up with the actual direction that the hair is lying, okay? So if there's like a, a parting, you know, your hair goes on one side, your hair goes on the other side. If there is a spot at the back of the head where all your hair comes from, make your lines look like they're coming from that spot. If there's a ponytail, put the hair actually going into the ponytail and then the hair coming out of the ponytail, okay? So um, I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate with like, you know, um, uh, a side swept fringe, um, and then, you know, like a short little bob, you know, just to keep it sort of simple for you. So say, for example, um, I've got origin point of around about here, and that's where a side swept fringe is going to come from. So you can see how all my lines look like they're consistently coming from this sort of rough area, yeah? And also you can see how I'm varying the size and the width of all of these little clumps of hair. Some are thinner, some are thicker, because hair does that in real life, all right? Um, okay? So you can see how, you know, my hair is coming here. Now, now over here, I'll have hair going towards sort of the back of the head. So I've got lines sort of going back. And then um, if I've got any loose strands over here, you know, think about what would happen in real life. I, I, I would tuck hair behind my ears, for example. So, you know, you might want to draw hair being tucked behind the ears just about there. You know, so it's, it's with manga, it's, it's deceptive because, you know, it's so clean and it looks simple, but really you do have to think about a lot of things and then you choose to only show some of those things. So all of what we do is informed by real life and it's informed by real life sort of like you know, principles and proportions and so on. It's just that we stylize it a little bit and then, you know, we pick and choose what we actually show. Now, we've got about 10 minutes, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to quickly demonstrate um, like a couple more views and how I would sort of change and how the guidelines would sort of change to match those views. Um, I'll give you just a moment. I'm just wondering, is it possible to raise this flip chart? Because this is really killing my knees. <laughs> Okay, make it, yeah, make it as tall as possible, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine I'm drawing a character looking this way. Okay, so now I'm gonna speed up a little bit, but this is just to show you, so it sort of plays out in front of you, you can understand the principle of how it works and stuff. All right, so I start off with a circle again. Cut the circle in half horizontally, but this is to match a character sort of looking that way. If he's looking up or down, you're still gonna cut the circle in half, but you're gonna tilt it up and tilt it down. The center line actually now goes down the side of the face because he's looking that way. Okay, so the middle of the face is looking that way. You join up the back of the circle to the point of the chin in that bottom corner. You put in your nose and your mouth markers, and so you've got everything there. Now. For the side profile, it's a matter of essentially matching up the bits of the face with all the guidelines. So your forehead, once you get to sort of between your eyebrows, you can feel even, you know, if you, if you draw a line down your own face with your finger, where does it go in? Where does it come out? Okay, so from the forehead, it dips in slightly. And then it comes out a lot to, for the tip of your nose. And then the tip of the nose lines up with the nose marker. And then from the tip of the nose, it comes into the face. And then right here, where your nose joins back onto your face, it's a really sharp angle just there. And then you should be able to feel like this. There's a couple of bumps for your lips. And then underneath it goes in a bit before the chin. So there you go, all right? And then, you know, you can make it snobbier, you can make it sharper. Again, this is just, you know, it's just basic guidelines. And then you can change how you draw your character on top of all of that. 
Now eyes in a side view are a sort of triangle shape. They line up roughly with the edge of the mouth and the cheekbones around about here. They come just below the eye socket line. Everything gets squished a little bit in the side view. Yeah. Eyebrows. Don't draw things going too far back in a side view, okay? Because of perspective, when it's a side view, squish them. And then ears. Okay, remember what I said about maths, right? In real life, your ears are exactly the same vertical distance from the eye down to the chin as, and, well, the jawline, as to where the ears are, okay? Another way to check that your face isn't completely out of proportion is that your ears should be about roughly two thirds back. All right, so around about there, okay? So you've got your ear, the bottom of your joint onto your chin. Choose the next size that's appropriate for your character. Draw some hair on top. So this time I'm just gonna quickly draw some spikes. Even when you draw a spiky hairstyle, you do have to understand that um, once a patch of the head has been used up to generate a spike, you cannot use the same patch of hair to make another spike. You've got to move on an appropriate amount. So you match up the amounts of head to the size of the spikes, okay? And then you can feather it on if um, you know, you've got hair that's swept up away from the hairline. I use a few strokes. Sometimes you can use like, you know, a straight line with a couple of, sort of zigzags, that's fine. Whatever works for you, whatever works for your style. There you go, side view. Okay, we've got five more minutes. Okay, we've got seven more minutes. Right, three quarter view and then full body proportions. Let's go. <laughs> three quarter view. Um, I'm actually going to do three quarters and slightly down, just to show you how it works in 3D. So you've got your circle, but no, it's not a circle, it's a sphere. All right, now imagine you're drawing the equator on the globe. If this character's looking slightly towards you and it's tilting down slightly, it's going to do that. All right, this is the back of the head, yeah? The dotted line is the back of the head. And then the center line, it cuts across three quarters of the way along, it goes down here. The face is more geared towards the front and the point of the chin. Maintain that trajectory, make the chin still stick out. The back of the head curves a lot to meet it at the front. Join that up so you've got your egg-shaped template, you've got your character looking that way, okay? Put your nose and your mouth markers in, so now you know where to put everything. Now, when you work in a three-quarter view, you have to take into account perspective. That side of the face, everything's gonna be squished. This side of the face, everything's gonna look wider. All right, so... You can see that the size of the eyes I draw already are quite different to each other. Okay, so can you see how everything on that side of the face is squished? Yeah, and everything on this side of the face is wider, okay? So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just doing this super rough now, but the edge of the face is the hardest thing to get right in this three-quarter view, all right? Because every tiny little thing you do will be magnified a lot and will like terraform the side of the face really strongly. So my key message to you here is, if you're not sure or not very confident about the side of the face in a three-quarter view, just mostly follow the template, or at most, only go in and out by a few millimeters, okay? You follow mostly the template. It goes in ever so slightly for where the eyes and the eye sockets are, comes out very slightly for the cheeks and the cheekbones, and then gradually comes back in again towards the chin. Ears in a three-quarter view should be just within the circle. Choose the next size that suits your character and then draw your hair on top. So now I'm gonna do a fringe that sort of like is in the middle, and then I'm gonna do a low ponytail around about here. So I'm gonna have all the hair sort of like being pulled into this sort of like ponytail. Okay? So, super, super, 
simple, but yeah, like I said, it's just about understanding how the guidelines change and work depending on how you do it. Now, I've just got a few minutes to talk you through full body proportions, okay? Right, when you look at someone in full size, okay, try to think about the size of their head compared to the rest of their body. All right, so I'm about five foot nine or 175 centimeters and I'm seven heads tall. So if you look at the size of my head and you count down how many heads I am, including my head, I'm seven heads tall, okay? Generally speaking, if you are wanting to draw like adults or teenagers, you wanna go for seven heads or up to maybe about 10. More than 10, we're sort of breaking out of manga territory and into more really, really crazy stylized Superman territory, okay? If you're drawing like children, you might want to draw sort of like more like five, like six, down to about four heads tall, and that's for quite young children. Once children get to the age of around about seven or eight, then their head proportions are kind of similar to grown-ups, all right? And the thing is, this works because when we're born, we have really big heads and small bodies, and then as we get older and, you know, grow taller, our heads grow, but our bodies stretch really fast, okay? So that's the reason how, you know, having a slightly different head ratio kind of works. Okay, but just to sort of like get things straight, so I'm just gonna quickly sketch something and then I'm gonna teach you how to draw the most proportionally accurate stick figure ever. Okay, give me a second. You don't have to do this bit, by the way. This is just to show you that it all kind of like works out when you, when you are actually like done. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a really sort of like, you know, rough stick figure, here, sorry, rough figure here. Now, please draw this bit along with me, okay? So, draw a head right at the top of your piece of paper, so there's no chance of, you know, the legs being cut off at the ankles because you've run out of paper, okay? So draw like a head, like an oval, at the top of your piece of paper. And then count down how tall you want your character to be. So I'm gonna say like seven, all right? Because this should line up with this, so one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there we go. So you draw the floor. So you draw the head, you draw the floor. Okay? So there's no excuses. You're definitely going to fit your character on this piece of paper. Right, now find the halfway point. From the top of the head down to the floor. About there. Yeah? That's where your legs start. Okay, so that's the bottom of the torso. And your legs, hips, ankles just above the floor line, feet just below the floor line. Okay? And then what's left in this space has to be the neck and the torso. Now for the neck, about a third of the height of the head is fine. One, two, three, about that much, that's fine. And then draw a rectangle for your torso. This encourages people to remember to draw shoulders, like defining shoulders, please. We have shoulders, draw them. Right, okay, so we've got this. And now the shoulder to the wrist is the same as the height of your torso. Hands are extra, okay? So if you want to draw somebody pointing or like, you know, an arm bent or whatever, make sure you add up the length so it matches up and your hands are extra, all right? And then when it comes to defining the joints inside, your elbows are halfway, your knees are halfway. So you can see how all of that lines up with the figure next to it, okay? It's half past. Have you learned lots today? Yes, okay, come by my table, have a chat with me, have a little look through my books. What's